warm welcome to the congregations of St. John's and First Lutheran in Poughkeepsie, New York, for an historic first joint virtual Easter worship celebration. Let me express heartfelt appreciation on Pastor Koenig's and my behalf for the extraordinary collaborative efforts of our respective worship, music, and communications teams who made it possible for us to enjoy this Easter festive worship service across cyberspace together. God bless you all and thank you again for that. And now let us begin our worship with a thanksgiving for baptism. Please join me in saying the responses at the end of each piece. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of our baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock. When we did not know the way, you sent the good shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side. And on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water, for the water in the fonts in our respective sanctuaries, and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, your grace, and your love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Christ Jesus our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. 
Let us pray. O oh God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption. And by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins throughout his name. Here ends the first reading. Please join me for a responsive reading of Psalm 118. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good. God's mercy endures forever. Let Israel now declare, God's mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and has become my salvation. Shouts of rejoicing and salvation echo in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord acts valiantly. I shall not die but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord indeed punished me sorely, but did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. Here the righteous may enter. I give thanks to you, for you have answered me, and you have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is taken from the book of Colossians, chapter 3. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, is revealed, then you also will be revealed with him in glory. Here ends the reading.
The Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord, descending from heaven, came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, his clothing white as snow. For fear of him the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead, and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Here ends the reading of the Gospel. Praise to you, O Christ. As we meditate on God's Word from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the Easter story this Easter 2020, we welcome both the congregations of St. John's Lutheran and First Lutheran in Poughkeepsie, New York, and our friends wide and near. Let us begin with prayer. God, in the midst of all these uncertainties, as the whole world struggles with COVID-19, as we shelter in place, physically isolated from each other this Easter morning, expand our hearts that we may stretch wide enough to receive the greatness of your love. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Boy, I miss the response of the congregation when we say, Alleluia. But you can do that at home, where you are, in place. We've been on quite a journey, haven't we, since Ash Wednesday, when many of us received the imposition of ashes and heard the jolting reminder of our own mortality. In the words of the creation story from Genesis 3, you are dust, and to dust you shall return. How little did we know then what was about to break open and spread out right in front of us and across the entire world, the terrible global coronavirus pandemic. Some went and journey, right? And perhaps the most somber Holy Week experience of our entire lives. And how about this morning as we gather for this historic joint virtual worship service Two congregations that are one in Christ with historic local denominational ties, but which, to the best of my knowledge, have never actually joined together to celebrate Easter before. You know, I cannot help but think how pleased Jesus probably is today that we actually have obeyed his dying wish as he prayed so earnestly in that Garden of Gethsemane as recorded in John chapter 17, and said that they may all be one, as he prayed, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. So what do we make of this unprecedented Easter season when we shelter in place rather than enjoying worship and fellowship together in person adorned in our Easter finest? Well, I asked some of you to share your reflections on what you're feeling about this very unique Easter, and I heard some common threads between the two congregations. Jean from St. John's reflected that community can't be squashed. 
She says, we continue to have Zoom Bible studies and virtual worship, Facebook interactions, emails, phone calls. The Christ Care Group and Contemporary Worship Team plan to gather through Zoom to watch the joint worship together. And our drive through Palm pickup, she said, reach not only our own members, but also people from the community who walked by and, and were so thirsty for connection. At our first Lutheran virtual fellowship breakfast via Zoom on Thursday, we usually meet at the Acropolis Diner, but there we were on Zoom. Several people reflected on how much more precious each sister and brother in Christ has felt to them during their Lenten journeys this year. Or as Deacon Peter put it, everyone is going through Lent. If they didn't know what the Lenten journey was before, they certainly do now. And Linda from First Lutheran shared that she's been drawn to Poughkeepsie Rural Cemetery where she's been enjoying the peace and the quiet and the space of fresh air walks. She's visited the graves of her deceased parents and family members. She's enjoyed the encouragement of songbirds and the flowing life and movement of the Hudson River, the spring flowers blooming, and the realization, as she put it, that nothing is over. Easter is not canceled, as the lawn sign on Deacon Pete and our President Nancy's front lawn puts it. Christ has risen and is with us always. Jonathan from St. John shared that with the self-isolating and less crowded streets, it's easier to notice the new life and better appreciate God's creation all around us. And Abby, again from St. John's, reflected on how watching virtual worship services from all over has given her a stronger sense of Christian community during this Easter season amidst the COVID-19 pandemic than ever before, given her greater hope and confidence in who the Holy Spirit has equipped us to be. So here we are on this Easter morning, holding on for dear life, comforted in new ways by our respective church families despite social isolation and still welcomed into God's embrace of forgiveness and unconditional love. We may be separated by physical space, but never spiritually. But oh, how we will never take the gift of the Lord's Supper for granted again, will we? Unlike all the unknowns of the coronavirus, you and I have the advantage of knowing how this Easter story ends. We know that the cross and the sealed tomb are not the last words of a promising story about a radical rabbi and his motley crew of fishermen and tax collectors and the likes of the woman at the well, but today, today we turn back to experience the story from the point of view of others 2,000 plus years ago who think that the story of Jesus and his disciples has, ad has ended very badly, who are devastated at their own circumstances, their own profound disappointments, as perhaps we are today. Those of us who watch the news and worry about the future or for the well-being of our children and grandchildren, and yes, even for ourselves, we identify. It's so easy to feel afraid these days. Just think what must have been going through the minds of the two women that are featured characters in St. Matthew's version of the Easter story. One of the first evidences of Easter transformation, by the way, appears to be in the status of women. Who told a story in Jesus' day from the perspective of two women anyway? And yet, these two unlikely starring characters, the two Marys, make their way to the tomb where Jesus has been buried, sealed by a huge stone drawn by their grief to be near the one they have followed and loved. As they arrive, suddenly, the quiet of dawn is interrupted dramatically by a terrifying earthquake. It's a seismic shift of the foundations of the world. Light has split a crack in the universe, and everything we thought we knew has changed. Next in this Easter story, Matthew gives us an angel with real attitude. 
This angel appears in a frightening way, coming in the midst of a terrifying earthquake, looking like lightning and possessed of ferocious strength. This angel is not at all pillow soft and feathery wings, but rather has the power to roll back the gigantic tombstone. This angel sits on top of the rolled away stone as though she owns it. This angel's appearance in the midst of the earthquake is so terrifying, in fact, that it scares the guards at the tomb half to death. And then we hear the message of the angel who announces to the women, do not be afraid. Now that's biblical code language again, isn't it? Because whenever you hear the phrase, do not be afraid, look out, because your whole world is about to be turned upside down. We know that. Sure enough, the two Marys can hardly take in what the angel says next. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised, as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. In the tense in the Greek, is the past tense. Come see where he used to lay, that is. And then here it comes. The orders that turn their lives upside down. Go quickly and tell his disciples he has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Now we don't know precisely what passes through their minds after hearing the angel's orders. But logic would dictate that they must have wondered what Peter, James, and John and the other disciples of status might have thought of them when they came with their incredible eyewitness account and their directive from the angel to meet Jesus in Galilee where it all began. The male disciples would surely have thought that these bereaved women were crazy with their grief. But there is such an urgency in the angel's message, go quickly she says to them. So that in verse 8 of Matthew's account, we read somehow the two Marys muster the courage to take a leap of faith. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to tell the disciples. And in that leap of faith that is tinged with the reality of fear as well as the hope against hope of an impossibly joyful expectation, another suddenly confronts them. We read in verse 9 that along the way, suddenly, Jesus meets them. The resurrected Jesus meets Mary Magdalene and the other Mary. And Jesus says to them, do not be afraid. Go, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. What is Matthew trying to say to us in his account of the Easter morning story? Well, first of all, he's whole framing of the Easter morning stories just about exploding with excitement and urgency and energy and forward propulsion. The repetition of suddenly and quickly throughout these 10 verses of Matthew's account keep us focused, keep us moving forward. Because resurrection is about moving forward in faith. It's about God's refusal to be stopped in his relentless efforts to demonstrate God's love for the world for each one of us. Not death, not boulders rolled across tombs, nor anything can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. And so the Easter story propels us to leave our fear behind and take joy in the adventure of faith that God invites us to embark upon. I had a text message from Donna on Monday, Thursday, an RN at a major medical center in our area and member of First Lutheran. For many years, she has worked on the psych floor, but her text was to share with me that she had just been reassigned as the head nurse on the newly opened COVID-19 unit. With her permission to share, this is what she wrote me. I prayed with my staff prior to going on the unit. They are scared and uncomfortable. They cried and said they had never prayed before a shift. I assured them God is looking out for all of us. And after the shift was over, I asked if they wanted to pray again. They all jumped up 
and we stood six feet apart observing social distancing and prayed for the safety of the next shift and all of our patients. I said, see, you did it. I thanked all of them like I always do. And as we were walking out to get our temperatures taken at the end of our shifts, some of the nursing staff who had been on the unit with me were talking and I over overheard them saying, wow, that prayer got me through last night. The Easter story is also about not getting stuck in our frustration and grief about everything that is wrong, everything that's a source of disappointment or despair, the despair of our own failures, or the disappointment we experience in how others have treated us. The Easter story is about Christ rising from the dead to run ahead of us and to meet us along our way in unexpected places and people, to bring us over and over again a message of hope and presence. Do not be afraid. But also to put before us a task as followers of Jesus, to go and tell. As Jesus said to the two Marys, go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Now, why Galilee, do you suppose? Well, Galilee is the center of Jesus' ministry in the gospel stories. It is the place where he entered into the lives of ordinary human beings, often those who were most in need, marginalized by the society of Jesus' day. The sick, the outcasts, the lonely, the dying, those who mourned, old women and young children and the despised. Galilee was the place where Jesus taught his disciples to have eyes to see and ears to hear the needs of others. And so symbolically, Galilee is for us today. Everywhere our lives are lived or placed on hold. The Easter story is about Jesus coming to meet us where we are now in our lives, saying to us, do not be afraid, not even as the coronavirus threatens us. Jesus is saying to you and me this Easter Sunday that as we move forward in faith, that is where Jesus will be waiting to receive us, to accompany us on our faith journeys like Donna did with her terrified nursing team on Monday, Thursday Eve. So go quickly. Don't wait to tell the story of God's love for you and for the whole world. Put God's love into action now. Touch the lives of anyone you can reach out to. And when you do this, suddenly you will see me, Jesus says to us. And just as suddenly, you will be helping to shift the balance of the kingdoms we live in between in favor of God's kingdom of love, of forgiveness, of reconciliation, where we all can feel hope and know joy and joy and joy. The message of Easter for us today is this. Do not be afraid. Go, move forward in faith. And that is where Jesus will be waiting to meet you. There is where you will see him. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen.
us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Uplifted by the promise, promised hope of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. All your creation praises you, the earth hums, the seas pulse, the stars shine, and the galaxies whirl in glorious harmonies to honor you. Let us hear and blend our voices in the song. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The countries of the world experience disunity and conflict. We set our minds on fear and greed rather than on your rule of justice and steadfast love. Build up all countries on your cornerstone of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We still weep with those who weep and mourn with those who mourn. Cradle the fearful, the suffering, and the dying, assuring them of your loving presence, especially those suffering from COVID-19. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Strengthen all those in health care who care for your people, from doctors to technicians, from nurses to housekeeping staff. Keep safe those who provide food and work in the grocery stores and all who are considered essential workers at this time. We thank you for their dedication. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless the creative and helpful service of worship leaders this day, musicians, worship assistants, preachers, readers, and all others who provide welcome and hospitality in our midst. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Bishop Paul, assistant to the Bishop Chris, and for our presiding Bishop Elizabeth, for the Lutheran Care Center, Dutchess County Interfaith Council, our ecumenical partners locally, the World Council of Churches, and for the Church Universal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the ecumenical prayer cycle for today, our sisters and brothers in Christ in Belarus, Moldova, Russia, and Ukraine have asked us to join them in praying for guidance as these nations work to reconfigure political and economic structures, compassion and integrity for all peoples in these nations, for those who suffer from alcoholism, HIV and AIDS, tuberculosis, and other life-threatening diseases, for the large numbers of people who now live in poverty and are unemployed, for those in Belarus and Ukraine who suffer from the continued effects of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster, and for those who struggle for democracy and truthfulness in the media. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you went ahead of us into the grave and defeated the powers of evil. We remember those who have died. Inspire us to live our lives in this resurrection hope and draw us to you in our final days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we place for all for whom we pray 
into your eternal care. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now will you join me in exchanging the peace. If you have anybody with you where you are sheltering in place, tell them you love them and tell them that God loves them. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Amen. The Lord is risen. He has risen indeed. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks that you loom our way through life with your word. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at last bring all of your world to his feet, your feast. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now let us say the prayer that Jesus had taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, born in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive the blessing. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 Amen. <laughs> Thank you.